Here's a question for you. What was one of the most popular and trendiest art forms in the Victorian period? Yes, yeah, surprising, isn't it? And did you know that here in Warwickshire, we had one of the most famous taxidermists in the world? His name was Peter Spicer. What would be the equivalent level of fame today? Pop star, footballer, politician? Certainly enough to mix with the rich, famous and royalty. Peter Spicer was born in Warwick in 1839 and it was here at Victoria Terrace in Leamington where he ran his internationally renowned business. So why did taxidermy become popular? Victorian Britain was a wealthy place with money lavished on leisure pursuits and fine ornaments. Queen Victoria herself was a pet lover and a collector of birds. There was a popular movement of anthropomorphism. Animals preserved and dressed as humans, like Beatrix Potter's famous Peter Rabbit. Hunting was very much in vogue. And Victorian hunters wanted to preserve their trophy. Victorian houses wanted to show off their wealth by displaying animals on tables or by mounting them on walls. Victorian explorers and naturalists travelled the world discovering new species, and taxidermy became a means of preserving these specimens, allowing others to study, admire and believe in the world's diversity. Historians wanted to document the natural world in the new museums and galleries springing up all over Britain. And for some, taxidermy was much more personal, a way of preserving their favourite pet, like the Earl of Warwick's raccoon. So clearly taxidermy was very popular at the time. But why did Peter Spicer do so well? Here to help us look at his work in more detail is Robert Shinnery, the author of A Record of Spicers and a collector of quality taxidermy. Peter Spicer, you know, was several things. He was a naturalist, an artist and a taxidermist. He's not just a bloke who wants to stuff an otter. You know, this is his whole life's been spent on this. He's in the field. He's a countryman with his dogs and he's watching. But he must also, you know, have a natural ability of being able to replicate it. This case is peak period. This is really Peter Spicer at his best, which is the turn of the century. Uh, he signs everything on a pebble. Uh, the modelling, as you can see, is absolutely fantastic. The painting on the backdrop, it's as near as to perfection as you can get. It's almost better than moving film which is what replaced taxidermy. That's what taxidermy went out of day because we all progressed and we went to photography. So Peter was a naturalist, a craftsman of great skill, and an artist in his own right. But he was also a shrewd businessman. He cultivated the right contacts and took orders from around the world, including the Shah of Persia, the King and Queen of Spain, and the Sultan of Brunei. He would conclude business himself with a personal touch often delivering by hand. By the 1890s, his workshop in Victoria Terrace was extensive and he led a dedicated workforce. This workforce was reduced by the horrors of the First World War and Peter Spicer had to manage this tragic loss while supporting the war effort with fur-lined gloves and replacement glass eyes. Peter retired in 1921. 
and handed the business over to his son. Fashions changed, and by the end, the spices had been reduced in 1948 to a workshop in New Street. With just four employees, all over the age of 70. Peter Spicer died in 1935, at the remarkable age of 96. But his name lives on. Pieces of his work are found in collectors' exhibits, museums and stately homes. Spicer work is greatly in demand and very valuable. His work is meticulously restored and can be admired yet again. Taxidermy itself is enjoying a resurgence with women coming to the forefront of this now hip and trendy industry, working with safer materials and displaying their own artistic flair. Currently practicing taxidermist Kate Latimer has her own perspective on this resurgence. A lot of people want to come and have a go at doing taxidermy and a lot of people are collecting it, so it's, it's grown massively in popularity over the last few years. There's that need there to make sure that it's ethical nowadays and I think that's probably why it has come back into fashion because people realise that it, no animals have suffered for the sake of taxidermy. The, the animals have died for another reason and what we're doing is just recycling and, and using that body in a different way and appreciating the beauty in, in, in life really that taxidermy is. It represents a life that once was. As taxidermy enjoys a resurgence and begins to find a new audience, it is the Victoria taxidermy that is still held in greatest esteem. And it is the work of Peter Spicer that is the most sought after. Third and final time, Peter Spicer's woodcocks at £6,500, sold to the gentleman. Congratulations, thank you very much. To answer an earlier question, what level of fame or who would Peter Spicer equate with today? Possibly David Attenborough. Widely known and loved and with a passion for documenting nature. Who knows where Peter Spicer's work will end up and how long they will last or whether fashion will change again. I hope we continue to admire the skill and artistry of his work as we continue to admire the creatures and habitat he loved.